So this one's integration by recognition. And by now, hopefully, you've come to understand that derivatives and integrating, they're the opposites of each other. Find the derivative and you find something, and then if you integrate that, you'll go back to the derivative. Um, we can use that fact to integrate things that are too difficult to integrate any other way. Check this out. So here's the sort of question I'm talking about. Find the derivative of y equals 5x plus 1 to the power of 3. Thus, deduce the integral of this thing. So being able to find the derivative of this should be able to help us find the integral of that. So you should be able to already find the derivative of this. Uh, y dash equals, bring the 3 out here, bring the 5 out here. It'll be 15, 5x plus 1 uh, to the 2. So that's the derivative of that. Now, we're supposed to be able to use that, deduce the integral of 3, 5x plus 1 to the 2. So you can see, hopefully, that this is very, very similar to that. It's not the same, though. Uh, so we can't say that the derivative of the integral of this is that, but they've got something to do with each other. That's a bit better. Okay, so now what am I doing here? I'm going to say that... Uh, the integral of 15 5x plus 1 squared uh, is equal to, um, what's the integral of that equal to? It's equal to that, 5x plus 1 to the 3 uh, plus c. So just important to note there, the integral of that is not just equal to that, it's equal to that plus some other value. Because if we were to add some other constant, like add 7, uh, that 7 would cancel out. So the plus c is still valid there. All right, now, um, what can I do here? I need to make that look more like that. And I can do that because I can say that 15, to make it look more like a 3, I can bring a 5 out of the integral. 3. 5x plus 1 squared. Um, now, I haven't changed that. I've just sort of uh, taken out a common factor, or taken out a factor. Uh, so I can say that that's 5x plus 1 to the 3 plus c. So that's still the same, right? Uh, now, if I divide both sides by 5, what happens? Well, if I divide this side by 5, that 5 disappears. So now I've got just the integral of 5x plus 1 squared. And if I divide this one by 5, I get 1 fifth 5x plus 1 uh, to the 3 plus c over 5. Now, c is just a constant, right? So uh, if I take that constant and I divide it by 5, I just get a different constant. So uh, I'm just going to write that different constant as just c with a little subscript 1. I'm just saying it's a constant, just a different constant. Um, okay, let's, let's look at what I have here. Thus, deduce the integral of 3, 5x plus 1 squared. I've done it. The integral of 3, 5x plus 1 squared is equal to 1 fifth, 5x plus 1 cubed plus c. Just to reiterate what I've done, I knew some derivative uh, here, okay, and now I said that looks kind of like that, but not quite. Now, the integral of that, the integral of that will be equal to whatever the original was, and now what do I have to do to that to make it look more like that? Divide it by 5, uh, well, sorry. First factor, factor out the 5, and then divide by 5. And now, here's my answer. Done. Uh, we're going to do a couple more of these because they are a little bit difficult to get your head around. All right, I hope you took those notes. Rewind it if you've got to take notes. Uh, now, here's another question. Exactly the same. I've just used the word antiderivative instead of integral. The question is identical. Antiderivatives, integrals. There's a small, like, nuanced mathematical difference. We won't go into it. Find the derivative of y equals e to the x to the 3. All right, so the derivative of that is the derivative of, or divide by the derivative of, oh, sorry, the derivative of that is 
the derivative of this out the front, so that's 3x squared, and then just that remains the same. Alright, uh, that's falling off the screen there. 3x squared e to the x to the 3. Step 1 complete. Thus, deduce the antiderivative of 6x squared e to the x to the 3. So they're saying, using that information, we should be able to find the antiderivative or the integral of that. So, the integral of that e to the x to the 3 is equal to that e to the x to the 3. Now, the question you have to ask yourself is, how can I make that look uh, more like that? Hmm. Well, they're very similar. This is just double that. If I multiplied that by 2, uh, that would be the same. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, 2, 3x squared e to the x to the 3 equals 2 e to the x to the 3. The integral, that 2 can come in there, equals 2 e to the x to the 3. Um, I've done it. Uh, that's it. That's the whole game. The integral of that, or the antiderivative of that, is equal to that 2 e to the x to the 3. Give myself a tick. That's the job done. Of course, you wouldn't be lazy. Plus c, plus c, plus c. Um, or important to note, I suppose, that uh, this is a plus c, this is a different plus c, because it's a plus c multiplied by 2. Uh, and that's the same plus c multiplied by 2, but it's just a plus c, so it doesn't matter. So here goes another one. Find the derivative of y equals sine bracket 2x plus 1. Thus, deduce the antiderivative of 8 cos 2x plus 1. So, find the derivative. Y dash equals, now the derivative of sine is positive cosine, so cos uh, 2x plus 1. But we have to take the derivative out of here out to the front. So, thus, deduce the antiderivative of this. So this is related to this. And you can see that they're very close together. One is multiplied by 4. So the integral of 2 cos 2x plus 1. Uh, is equal to um, that sine 2x plus 1. Now, how do I make that look like that? Well, I have to multiply it by 4. So 4, 2 cos, oh, don't forget your plus c, 4 integral 2 cos 2x plus 1 equals... Uh, 4 sine 2x plus 1 plus uh, 4 times c, which is just some other c. Uh, now that 4 can come inside, so I get integral 8 cos 2x plus 1 equals 4 sine 2x plus 1 plus c1. Thus, deduce the antiderivative of 8 cos 2x plus 1. The antiderivative, or the integral of 8 cos 2x plus 1, is 4 sine 2x plus 1 plus c, or plus c1, some other c value. Uh, easy. One more. Find the derivative of y equals natural log 5x squared minus 2. Thus, deduce the antiderivative of that. All right, so find the derivative. Uh, y dash equals... Uh, now, the derivative of that is 10x over all of that. Now, if you're not sure how to do that, you better go back and look at some uh, derivatives and, and practice those. But that's how you find the derivative of something like that. Thus, deduce the antiderivative of that. Okay, so the integral of that... 10x over 5x squared minus 2 is equal to that ln 5x squared minus 2 uh, plus some c value. Now, 
how do I make that look like that? Well, I just need to divide it by 10. That's, that's it, because if I were to divide it by 10, those 10s will cancel out, and it's going to look exactly like that. Or multiply it by 1 tenth. 1 tenth of 10x over 5x squared minus 2 equals 1 tenth of ln 5x squared minus 2. Uh, divide that by 1 tenth as well, uh, which is just going to create some different constant value. Alright, so 1 tenth times, if I put that inside, those tens are going to cancel each other out. The integral of x over 5x squared minus 2 equals uh, 1 tenth of ln 5x squared minus 2 uh, plus some c1 value. Uh, I wonder if your textbook does anything different there. So, sorry, I believe there is my answer. The antiderivative of that is that. And that looks like about right. So, done. Uh, four examples of integration by recognition. They all follow the same pattern. As you can see, I just had to rub out these little things and do each one again. Um, give it a crack.